There are many astonishing ancient ruins which can be found throughout India. Ancient temples or caverns, often carved into giant boulders or directly out of the bedrock of Earth itself. Many of these ruins drenched in exquisite artwork, carvings created with such vision and accuracy that they boggle the minds of all who attempt to explain the methodology of their creator. We have covered a number of sites within India in the past, many of them so precise in their finish that they could have seemingly only been created using precision stone-cutting technology. And our next site of interest is of no exception. Located in the northern part of the state of Karnataka in South India, the village of Hampi has some extremely captivating ruins. Dotted with large boulders, the site is also home to some extremely puzzling relics. One of which is the ancient chariot, clearly a depiction of a once astonishing creation. The cart itself was not only clearly massive, but was pulled with elephants rather than horses. Clearly indicative of a highly capable group, this incredible chariot is one amongst an array of marvelously preserved architectural artifacts, most of which display a level of refinement created with such precision that modern man could only replicate such feats using machines, something modern academia claims has only ever been utilized by our own modern civilization. Thus, an explanation as to how the site, or indeed its smorgasbord of ancient precision-made stoneworks were made, eludes us to this day. And we hypothesize that the reason for this is due to mainstream historians' reluctance to consider what these ruins clearly indicate – that they were once the work of a civilization that was not only highly advanced, but utilized stone-cutting technologies, methods of transportation, lifting and placement that rival even that of today's architectural capabilities. How can one peer upon such sites as that of Hampi, or indeed others – Pumapanku, Giza, Petra, etc. – sites created with such accuracy? that to suggest they were created with soft metal tools or with the use of primitive measuring equipment is simply absurd. Furthermore, none of these ruins would be possible simply with the use of the human eye. The only logical explanation is that just like that of modern-day stonework, the stones were indeed machined, cut to such a high quality using precision tools, only then were they placed where they lay today. Hampi was predictably re-inhabited by ancestors based within permitted timelines, once being the capital of a previous Indian empire. What's intriguing about the site, however, is the mysterious, seemingly untouched boulders which dot its grounds. The question is, although they now appear to be geological, were they in fact once relics themselves, left by an even earlier civilization? If not, then why were these stones left where they are found today? Why were they built around rather than utilized, carved, or shifted? They were clearly ones of significance, and due to the fact ancient sanctuaries and fortresses are often re-inhabited, the possibility that they were indeed once carvings would logically make sense. The questions would be, just how old is this civilization? Who built the ancient site of Hampi? How did they build it? Were ancient high technologies utilized in its creation? If not, then how was it constructed? It is a place which we find highly compelling. A few months ago, we did a video regarding an enigmatic mountain which rests within modern-day Tibet. We touched upon the amazing legends, speaking of the mountain actually being that of an ancient man-made pyramid, which according to such legends is placed at the center of the universe. They spoke of a mysterious giant eye placed upon the top of the mountain, an eye which according to said legends will reveal itself when the ice and snow within the area melts away. Akin to a story containing the eye of Mordor, yet hopefully not as malevolent. Although Mount Kailash can be found within modern-day Tibet, its location is very close to the borders of India a place which few know possesses one of, if not the most amazing ancient structure to have ever been discovered or indeed built upon our planet. A structure which dwarfs the Great Pyramids, and indeed the Great Sphinx with artistic wonder. Actually known as the Kailash Temple, it is an exquisitely cut series of supposed praying temples and other communal buildings 
which was, many thousands of years ago, carved straight out of an enormous horseshoe-shaped rock resting within a hillside. According to mainstream academia, Kailash Temple was somehow built by a primitive people using primitive tools during a duration of 400 years, from 200 BC to 600 BC. However, no one seems to be able to explain how such a primitive culture could have possibly created something so awe-inspiring, something so artistically accurate and wonderful, something we would indeed struggle to recreate today. A structure not only architecturally accurate, but also drenched in a masterpiece of sculpture. Largely accepted as a flawless piece of art, no less than 200,000 tons of stone was masterfully carved away, creating several separate temples, each drenched in tiny artistic detail. Rediscovered in 1819, is it possible that the Hindu decorations found within were merely later additions? Additions to a relic left actually built by a civilization far more advanced and far more ancient than we are allowed to publicly believe? It is understandable for one to wonder, how did a primitive civilization create such a wonder with primitive tools, attaining such a perfection, such refined finish to each tiny detail? It is conveniently unexplained just how they managed to cut into this single block of rock with such precision and indeed vision adorning the structure with thousands of animals. It seems as if it were a tribute, a gift, depicting what can be found on our planet. Is Mount Kailash, as legends say, really the center of the universe? Is this mind-bogglingly detailed, most intricately built ancient temple by a long way actually a tribute to this fact? Made up of temples which are all now perceived to be shared between three faiths, Buddhist, Hindu, and Jain. Are these multiple faiths further evidence of a re-inhabitation rather than a construction? The 200,000 tons of rock, for example, is nowhere to be found. And as previously covered in the Kailash video, the same is seen with the apparent enormous excavation found around the base of Mount Kailash itself. Compelling evidence for manipulation of the landscape giving credence to the legends of it being, in fact, an enormous pyramid. Regardless of this, the fact that the temple carries the same name as this mysterious and still unclimbed mountain within Tibet, we find highly compelling. The 16th century Kerala's temple located within India used to be the royal chapel of Travancore's former rulers. It shot to fame five years ago when one of its six vaults, later coded as A, was opened, unearthing tons of gold coins, jewelry and diamonds worth hundreds of millions of dollars. An expert panel, inventorying assets at Kerala's famous Sri Padmanabhaswarmi temple, has approached the Supreme Court for permission to open an as yet untouched vault, a vault containing unimaginable fortunes, a face-off between the judiciary and religious authorities. The temple, situated in the heart of India, is billed as the country's richest and is one of several Hindu shrines that hold enormous amounts of gold and precious gems. The wealth was accumulated by way of holy offering from devotees over many years. The temple contains six chambers buried deep under its sanctum sanctorum. Two of them are open during daily rituals and two more every six months. The remaining two, A and B, are secret vaults. Sources close to the temple said antique coins found in the chambers alone weighed more than 600 kilograms. Around 200,000 items were documented, 600 of which were embedded with precious gems. One single locket alone was believed to contain 997 gems. Besides jewels, precious stones, necklaces, golden crowns and pots were also included in the list of inventory sources said. According to the India Times, an audit conducted into the assets shows that a massive amount of gold has mysteriously disappeared. Up to 769 gold pots and silver bars have been reported missing, some suggesting that there are hidden tunnels beneath the chamber which allowed the architects to lock the chamber doors from within, making it impossible to breach. This secret tunnel seems to have led to many years of plundering the treasure trove without anyone noticing. However, what has not been publicly acknowledged by the Indian court is the existence of the hidden inner chamber beyond Vault B, 
reported as having thick walls made from solid gold, and it is where the real treasure is said to be located. Dwarfing what has been recovered so far, it could quite possibly contain the largest undiscovered treasure in the history of the world. Not only is the temple covered in gold, it seems it is also stuffed full of the stuff also. An expert panel from the Center for Earth Science Studies has also quashed rumors that the Bee Vault has an underground tunnel connected to the Arabian Sea. The team led by Dr. Ajakumar Verma detected small cavities and drains around cellars that they found insignificant. Chamber B is not part of the temple's official treasury. The holy chamber houses idols of gods and many other valuables meant to enhance the potency of the principal deity. Also found was a pure golden throne adorned with hundreds of diamonds and fully precious stones, meant for the seating of a past giant that has been estimated around 18 feet in height. In addition, many other large, sometimes giant and very old solid gold crowns were found, all studded with diamonds and other precious stones. The valuables are believed to have been accumulated in the temple's vaults over several thousand years, having been donated to the gods by various dynasties and kings. We will keep you posted on what they find in Vault B. There are countless ancient sites found all over the planet that are not only far older than current academically claimed by individuals funded to come up with specifically permitted dates for their creation, selling one's integrity in favor of financial securities and an authoritative position within society, offered to them in return for their obedient deceits. Like a mule guided by a carrot, these individuals not only fear losing such reputations and handsome incomes, if one were to tell the truthful story regarding said sites, but they unquestionably turn a blind eye to the many areas that I cover, which are often not only implausible to state where the work of the particular permitted re-inhabitants placed much closer to us within history, but to suggest that such ancestors were capable of said feats is simply a preposterous claim. They often knowingly and deliberately overlook such features due to their lack of any plausible explanation for such accomplishments. As such, with many ancient sites simply ignored or are disguised as closed book cases, with a dull, deliberately disinteresting tale of origin. These academics have some of the most intimate access to these ruins, yet deny the world's population a true account of said relics. For to suggest that a civilization less advanced than us accomplished the placement of megaliths far into the thousands of tons precisely atop one another with awe-inspiring stonework details and polygonal brickwork seemingly created like a puzzle of unique pieces, among many other baffling features, I feel is a proof of a deliberate agenda-driven conspiracy concealing said site's true origins. These unexplainable anomalies the main reason why said individuals perceive me as a threat, not only to their funding, but also their positions of trusted authority within modern society. For the truths I tell, due to the inexplicable nature of their existence and their lack of exposure within academic studies, expose the field as a funded organized group of deceivers. These features are simply impossible for them to explain. Yet they continue to claim that they were built by people who were undeniably incapable of such feats. This is why many unexplainable artifacts simply vanish, and why many ancient sites are not only brushed under the proverbial carpet, but said features overlooked, ignored, and not mentioned at all. And our next relic is no exception. Many people have heard of the Great Wall of China one of the only ancient ruins which is so large it can be seen from space. A very famous wall. Yet an even greater number of people are unaware of another great wall which can be found within India. Successfully overlooked by modern historians and antiquarians alike, this wall, known as the Kumpalgar, has been claimed to be merely a recently created ruin. Yet I feel, just like the many other ancient ruins found around the globe, is far older than currently claimed. It is of an astonishing size. And a number of alternative so-called fringe researchers, which academics like to derogatorily call them, have found substantial evidence that not only is the upper layers far older than claimed, 
but the entire wall sits upon a foundation immensely older than the wall we see today. A foundation that many have concluded is so old that it had simply turned to dust through the eons, rebuilt at a currently unknown time within antiquity. The wall stretches an astonishing 22 miles, and once protected hundreds of extremely ancient dwellings, and measured at over 40 feet thick, to suggest that such a feat could have been accomplished by our more recent ancestors, who the founders of mainstream academia permits, is a tough posit to agree with. For if such claim were true, why is the wall seemingly ignored by modern history? I feel the reason the wall has been successfully kept largely unknown is due to the fact that if openly studied and widely known of, more people would research such site eventually realizing, like many before them, that the wall is far older than currently claimed, and possesses such enormous amounts of stone, along with an immensely older foundation, that current claims of its origins and age are simply incorrect, and a clear attempt to shrug off this astonishing structure as a reasonably modern creation, which they hope will not be looked at closely. An attempt to close the book on a possible antediluvian ruin which many people as a result told with a dull deceptive history for its existence, which not only stifles one's interest regarding the wall's origin, but deters the curious from ever investigating the wall's truly astonishing nature. A motivation which I feel is the main driving force behind its lack of public exposure. Who rebuilt the Great Wall of India? How old is its far older highly eroded foundation? The Great Wall of India was an astonishing feat of ancient engineering, a feat that academia would prefer stay largely unknown, a reality which I find highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you. India is a place littered with incredible ancient yet unexplained ruins. Intricate ancient carvings can be found dotting the cliff faces. Seemingly laser-cut caves hewn from enormous rocks, and perhaps the most impressive of its collection, the rock temples hewn straight from bedrock which can be found all over the country. We recently focused our attention on one of these sites in particular perhaps the most impressive of these ancient temples. Known as Kailash, it is a structure drenched in sculpted animals and religious idols. Many others also exist, somehow carved straight out of stone hillsides. The accuracy in which these structures were carved, the refined finish achieved, has allowed these structures to evade explanation to this day. There is, in fact, another site within India, another temple, that, just like Kailash, was somehow hewn from a solid hillside. However, what is particularly interesting regarding this temple is that it was mysteriously abandoned, leaving the apparent different stages of its construction for all to see. Known as Vetuvan Coil, it is located within Kalagumalai a panchayat town in the south Indian state of Tamil Nadu. Intriguingly, upon the structure and the carved walls which it is now framed by is the same telltale chisel marks found at so many other sites around the world, an anomaly we have already covered in depth. However, what is particularly interesting regarding Vetivan Coil is the fact that these crude marks are also accompanied by the seemingly impossible perfect finished sculptures, which mystify all who peer at them to this day. It is a visual, chronological timeline cast in stone, possibly left by an as yet unknown people, using unexplained yet amazing artistic skills. The temple seemingly displays the methods used to carve it. The artist responsible crudely chiseled the design, presumably somehow from the mind's eye, then somehow professionally worked into the refined, astonishing art, which adorns so many of these ancient Indian structures. 
Who built Veta Van Coil? How did they achieve such perfection, with such hard stones, at such an early time in history? Is it, like academia would have you believe, a mere 1400 years old? Or is it a far more ancient structure, built using as yet unknown stone working techniques, used by an unknown group of artists? As research mounts surrounding such sites, the answers will inevitably be discovered. India is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown of ancient sculpture. And although Rome is home to the Renaissance, an attraction which lures enormous numbers of people there every year, India is unquestionably home to sculpture, which would put even the most efficient of the Italian masters to shame. However, conveniently, academia, and thus most of the modern world, overlook these astonishing feats of ancient art in favor of less controversial artistic wonders. One of our tried and tested methods of establishing whether an ancient artifact, or indeed an ancient ruin, attributed to a less capable, more modern imposter, is actually evidence of forgotten lost knowledge, is finding the puzzling accomplishments often hidden within the architecture or construction. One of the many examples of these is polygonal masonry. And although the modern man does indeed practice this lost art, a good example of this being found within the Cotswolds in the UK, known as Cotswold Dry Stone Walling, once built and still used to mark out very ancient land boundaries, and amazingly, longer than the Great Wall of China. These very old walls, created without the use of mortar, are compelling examples of a fragmented technique either borrowed or, possibly intriguingly, leftover memories of a now forgotten technology. And although these more modern attempts range in age stretching far into thousands of years, the lesser capability of the builders is clear for all to see. Our point being that when these ancient walls stretching far before the Romans are compared to Mesoamerica, Peruvian, and indeed ancient Indian ruins, the exquisite polygonal architecture, the precise carving and stone building present, are clear, strong, controversial evidences of a forgotten civilization. How did these ancient builders acquire such a sophisticated knowledge and awareness of stone shapes, and the subsequent placement of each stone, perfectly placed against one another, forming impenetrable barriers which have stood the tests of the ages? We feel that, regardless of what academia claims is the truth, pertaining to the origin and creators of these ancient wonders, the skills required to create them are thankfully beginning to become apparent to the majority rather than the few. This ancient, forgotten people clearly attained a level of stoneworking and construction knowledge we are yet to acquire. Clearly, a far more advanced and capable people than we are today let alone the modern historical imposters academia claims as the culprits. We feel, regardless of others' claims, the evidence to suggest an intercontinental, highly advanced, technologically superior civilization once flourished here on our planet is highly compelling. India possesses an enormous array of incredible ancient architectural accomplishments mind-boggling feats of ancient engineering, many of which continue to mystify modern explorers and elude modern understandings. Exquisite details displaying prodigious artistic abilities and accuracy. Ancient stone carvings, which seem all but impossible, yet here they are for all to see. We have in the past explored many of these sites. We have explored the similarities and tool marks found at other sites all over the world. The now lost methods which were utilized to once carve entire temples from a single block of bedrock. We have also investigated the many temples constructed from quarried stones. Temples which possess columns seemingly created on lathes, yet many of these pieces weigh in excess of six tons. Just how these feats were accomplished remains a complete mystery. And our next architectural anatomy 
is of no exception. According to mainstream academics, Virabhadra Temple was built by the brothers Varana and Varupana, which were governors under the Vijayaranga Empire during the reign of King Achutaraya within the 16th century. Located in the village of Lepakshi, a significant place in the great Indian epic Ramayana, legend has it that the bird Jatayu, wounded by the king of Lanka, fell here after a futile battle against the king. When Rama reached the spot, he saw the bird and said compassionately to him, Lepashki, meaning Arise Bird in Telugu. Although the temple is claimed as the work of said brothers, just like that of many other incredible, inexplicable sites throughout the world, any explanation as to how they achieved this incredible feat remains elusive. Additionally, there is one feature in particular which not only remains unexplained, but its past purpose, or perhaps more importantly, how this feature was successfully created remains unknown. Known as the Hanging Pillar of Lepachki, it is a column which initially appears to be a weight-bearing structure. However, on closer inspection, one discovers that this column is in fact set aloft, with its significant weight somehow being dispersed along the temple's roof. It is as if the builder of said temple created the column as a statement, a display of their incredible abilities and architectural skills. The column seemingly serves no function other than to display the capabilities of the temple's builder. It is as if they were simply showing off. Furthermore, along with a past purpose remaining elusive, just how the temple's inner structure actually supports the weight of the column is also an unknown. How can one be expected to believe that a temple such as this, located among many of India's other astonishing ruins, one which possesses clear displays of complex, advanced, and in-depth understandings of load-bearing architecture, along with the majority of its existence currently unexplained, was supposedly built by one of our well-studied ancestors a mere 500 years ago. How can one accept this as a logical explanation for its origins? The Hanging Pillar of Lepashki is clearly an incredible work of ancient engineering, one that, although claimed as the work of known ancestors, remains largely unexplained. It is a temple which we find highly compelling.